I said uh, yesterday, I, whatever the Big Sky Conference does with their schedule, with alignment, with divisions, with how many teams are in, uh, the, on the schedule, whatever, we'll line up and we'll play that schedule. I mean, that, we love the conference. It's a great conference. And, uh, you know, that's, that's our home. So we'll, we'll do whatever they say. My personal feeling is uh, I liked the full round robin that we were playing with a nine-team conference. And, uh, you know, eight games, a full round robin, it's, a, it's, to me, the most equitable way to choose a champion. That's what we're in. When you have a conference, the goal is to be the conference champion. Mm -hmm. And the best way to determine a conference champion is with a full round robin. So I'm not a big fan of divisions. I'm not a big fan of divisions in the FCS level because you can't play a championship game when you have a championship playoff right after the season. So divisions, I think, are, they work very well in the FCS or the FBS level, you know, where you can have a, a championship game in December and then a bowl game later. That fits pretty well, and that's a good way to determine a champion is to play a championship game. We won't be able to do that. So the divisional concept, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense at the FCS level. Do you but feel, it is what it is, so we're going to Do you go feel play. like you're being listened to? Do you feel like you as a coach, your voice is being heard by the – Presidents and athletic directors and powers of be? You know, all you can do in a, in a democratic system is, you know, say your thoughts and, and run it up the flagpole and see what happens. And, and uh, there's a, as in any group, there's going to be a, a ton of various opinions and ideas, and we're just one voice in that whole mix. So, you know, the, the uh, presidents have made the decision, and we're going we're gonna to go with it and make it the best we can. The good news is the big sky was always one of the best conferences in the country, and now we're going to be even stronger. Speaking of which, you're in contention this year for a conference championship. Uh, huge game coming up Saturday. What's, what's the mood of the team? Yeah, the mood of our team is the same as it's been for maybe the entire season. We've done a great job this year of focusing on the, the task at hand. Tuesday's practice, Wednesday's practice, Thursday's practice, the, the game on Saturday and just the one game, you know, the one that we're playing. And that's why we've done well. That's why we've been successful is because we're, we're focused. And, yeah, Weber State is next up. They're the, they're the opponent. They're a very, very good football team. We've, we've studied them extensively now for the last two days. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenging, fun, exciting game. How different is this Weber State team that you're facing this week than the one that went out and had some stumbles early on in the season? I think they've done a tremendous job of riding the ship. And getting themselves, you know, in contention now for the the playoffs for sure, and potentially the championship too, as they go into the home stretch of the season. They they were struggled early. They had uh, turnover issues and problems, and, and uh, didn't really have their identity. And then, you know, about mid season they figured it out. And right now they're playing extremely solid football. They're very um, determined. They're they're coming up with clutch plays. They're making big plays at the ends of end of the games, and they're and they're winning. So I'm impressed with what they've done. As a head coach, uh, you know, how much do you need to tweak yourself and the way you teach in a given year? I mean, just speaking about it, Ron McBride brought uh, Cameron Higgins into his office and did some personal film study with him, which he said something you would never do because typically he's a little bit too hard on quarterbacks. I mean, how much do you have to change yourself to fit the personality of your team? Well, I think Ron McBride is, uh, you know, coaching his personality right now. I mean, because he's, they've gone, obviously, as you watch him on tape, they've gone to more of an emphasis on the run game and the power of football that I think he prefers and likes, and I think that's just what he went back to when they were struggling a little bit. It looks to me like he went back to his, you know, his preferred style of playing this game, and that meant taking a great quarterback like Cameron Higgins and maybe reducing his role a little bit. But Cameron Higgins can still beat you. When you look at these games, you, know, you concentrate too much on the run, he's going to be able to hit the home run now, maybe even better than before when they were throwing the ball more often. So I think it's a great move on his part, and uh, they've come up with a formula that's very, really looking good. And talk about those three running backs that they use, you know, by Tafuna, Bo Bolin, obviously a guy you recruited a little bit, right. and uh, Josh Booker, one of their, their new quicker guys this year. How, how did they use each of those backs differently? Uh, the roles of the running backs have evolved as the season's gone along. Uh, as they've gone into more and more power, they're using Tafuna and, and Bolin more. And that kind of fits their, the, the kinds of plays that they're running right now. Uh, Tafuna, is, in particular, is, is going to get the majority of carries on if they're going to run ISO and power and the things that we've seen on tape. But they also do a nice job of spreading the field out and giving the ball to Bolin or Tafuna sometimes and uh, you know, running the ball out of their spread formation. So you, it's going to be a it's going to be a challenge because they're very diversified with those backs. Comforting at all to you knowing that your team has done a pretty good job defending the run on you. It's going to be a, a battle of strengths in this game. Weber State's 
clearly the best power running team that we've seen, maybe the best running team we've seen all year. And um, our defense prides itself on stopping the run, so it's strength against strength, and uh, it'll be a it'll be a classic matchup. And you know, just uh, like Coach Marshall said, uh, watching Weber State play against Montana, he said he said I got sore watching the film. <laughs> so it's going to be one of those games that's going to be a battle. Coach, do you anticipate their strategy to be to keep the ball out of your hands by establishing that run game and trying to grind the clock out? I think so. I mean, that strategy is effective anytime you play the game of football. I mean, the ball control is important, especially when the other team, like our team, has a, has a good offense. And so, sure, I would imagine they will try to keep the ball. But, they, you know, the dilemma for a team that wants to keep the ball is you're going to have to score some points, too, eventually. And so, you know, there has to be a mix, and that hopefully that's, you know, that'll give us some opportunities to get them stopped and, and uh, you know, get the ball back in our offense's hands. Coach, you said that the, uh, after the game you felt the defense was back and they had one of its best performances in weeks. What did you see um, from Saturday that gives you confidence in your defense going forward? I really liked the way our defense played. We, were, we had some, some sharpness to our execution. We, we got off blocks better. We were very sound in the, in the run game. We talked about being gap sound and assignment sound on defense. We did that. We made plays. Uh, coverage was good. We only had three explosive plays that we allowed in the game. You know, big runs, big passes. So you know, we, we, we reduced the number of big plays that had been uh, that were executed against us. And all those things were factors that we've always done here. And it was just nice to have it back. I feel good about our defense. You've had so many close games this last month. What is it? But you managed to win them for the most part, other than obviously in a new game. What's the difference between winning those close games and teams that don't win? I think you have to have a mentality that you're going to win the game. And not that you're going to win it easily, that you're going to just you're going to sit back and wait and it's going to fall in your lap. But if you keep plugging, if you don't fall apart, if you don't fold when the adversity strikes and you keep battling, that uh, eventually you'll make a play and win the game. And it's a confidence that we're not afraid to play a close game. We're not afraid to go into overtime. You know, we're not afraid to play 60 minutes because we know we'll keep battling and we'll find a way to make a play. I was talking to Sean and asking, you know, if he felt the team was surging at this point in the year. Obviously, you know, you can get better every day, but do you feel like this team is getting close to, you know, its maximum level? I do, Will. I think we're getting better. We've talked a lot about trying to play our best football in October, the mid part of the season, and I think in many respects we are. Uh, but it, each week something seems to rear its head, uh, you know, that's, that sets us back a little bit. The, most, the latest being the ball security issue we've had the last two weeks. So, you know, we've got to get that fixed. I think if we can, uh, I think we, you know, we could be peaking at the right time. Wait, wait, what do you do to fix ball security? I mean, Adrian Peterson said he was going to carry around like a 10-pound football <laughs> to try and fix it. I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you fix it? Uh, if I knew, I'd probably be a very wealthy <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, we, we just practice it, talk about it, make sure guys are conscious of it. And, and I think in a game of this magnitude against a team like Weber, I think there will be a heightened awareness of the value of keeping the football. And so maybe just the fact that, you know, the game is what it is will be enough for our guys to pay just that extra bit of attention to the football that they'll need to to. To hang on to I feel like some of it's fluky. I mean, I mean, yeah, Lorenzo, sure I mean, wasn't necessarily fumbling the ball at all. Before. No, he just both fumbles, uh, Everett's fumble and uh, Lorenzo's were just where a guy was trying to make a tackle and just got his arm right on the ball at the right time. And if he hits the forearm instead of the football there, maybe it's not going to come out. But by the same token, there's a certain way to carry the football that we're not always doing, and we have to get the ball more secure when we're running with it, so that those fluke times when an arm hits the ball doesn't cause a fumble. Coach, this is your last home game of, of the regular season. Um, when you were plotting out your path to winning the conference title, where did, where did I guess, defending the home field come into play? I mean, was that part of the equation? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, again, we talked about the season just taking it one game at a time, so there was never big, a big master plan of we can, we can win this one, but we can't win that one or whatever. But I, I think in, in any uh, run to a championship, if you can win your games at home, uh, you've got a much better chance to, to win the, the whole thing. And then so I... My goal going into the season was to be undefeated at home, protect our home turf. Our fans have helped us a lot. Our guys have really seized on the, the idea of protecting our home field and, and winning at home, using the home field advantage to help us win a championship. And so we'd like nothing better than to finish that run with a you know with a good win on Saturday. Why do you think it's been so tough across the league to win a road this year? I mean Everybody seems well, to I, I think here's my take on it. I think the league is very balanced. The teams are good from top to bottom, and I think there is a slight edge playing at home when you have you know home cooking and your own bed to sleep in and your home crowd and comfort of the surroundings. And so maybe that's just the little tiny margin of difference between winning and losing because the league is so balanced. 
Coach, you said you put a lot of stock in the last game. Weaver coming off a big win over Montana. They're actually on a roll, three three game winning streak. What have you seen from them? How do you stop that momentum? Well, they had a great win, and that was an awesome game. They played extremely well. They, they protected the football and took the football away from Montana in the second half. And so, you know, we have to try to flip that formula some way into our favor. You know, we have to protect the ball, like uh, you know, not let them take it away from us. And we have to make sure that we. You know, get ahead and, and not let them control the football game. I mean, that's simply the best formula to use. And I don't think there's any magic about momentum. I don't think last week's win helps you win next week's game. I think you just go line up and play. And uh, you know, we're we're having a fairly good season too. So I think both teams are in position to have a classic game on Saturday. What's yeah. the situation? I'll go ahead. No. Yeah. Uh, same question I asked Sean. I mean, you guys have Weber this week, and then you end the season with Montana, two mm -hmm. of the better teams in the Big Sky. Do you like having those tough games down the stretch as you go for the playoff push? The only game we're talking about right now is Weber. They're a tough team. They're going to take every ounce of our focus and concentration this week. And that, you know, if we if we don't win this one, we don't control our destiny anymore. And everybody understands that. So. Our complete focus is on Weaver. I'm glad they're, I think, being a good team like they are will really grab our team's attention this week and will you know, raise our level of focus and preparation, which will help us play better on Saturday. So it's good to play a good team right now this week. What's the situation at linebacker now? Do you, do you still find you see yourself using Mike Ryder a lot at that position moving forward? A lot of it depends how the week goes. Clay Bignell is back. He's going to practice, and, and a lot of it will depend on his comfort level with his foot. He played. 13 plays against Idaho State played pretty well, and we're expecting him to be back now. And to the extent that he can play, uh, that'll dictate everything else. And uh, Dustin O'Connell, you said, I mean, he's been practicing a little bit, I know. He's going to practice more today and see how it goes. We would love to have him back. Do you have a probability this weekend for him? I'd say he's possible. Clay is, is good to go. And then offensive line, um, you had Conrad Burbank working a little bit. Casey Dennehy obviously out with the stats. Dennehy's still not clear. Won't be practicing today. He's day to day. So Burbank will be the starter more than likely now. Coach, at the start of the year, you said you thought eight wins would qualify a team for the Big Sky for the FCS playoffs. You still feel that way, and you're one away now from the eight more. I still think eight's the magic number, but it depends on how many other teams in the country have eight. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can't control, so we're just going to try to line up and try to get our eighth win this week and then you know we'll carry on from there. Oh coach Caleb did he is there any fall off of the whole